I just used this code to scrape about a thousand URLs for data and it took one minute and 43 seconds. Not too bad, but it could definitely be better. And to make it better, we can use async. So async won't actually make us quicker per se, it will actually make us a lot more efficient by not having to wait for each response before we make the next. So in this video, I'm going to show you the basics of async with Python, making requests, and then I'm going to put the async code into this code here so you can see how to add async into your existing projects. The hardest part of scraping is consistently and reliably getting data at scale, and this is exactly what the sponsor of today's video solves. Scraping B is a real-time web scraping API that solves a web scraper's biggest pain points, rendering JavaScript pages and managing a quality proxy pool. Scraping B will handle your headless browsers and rotating proxies for you, giving you a simple to use and intuitive API, built for developers and ready to integrate into your own system, project or solution. It uses the latest Chrome browsers for a quick and easy rendering and page loading, taking away the issue of heavy resource usage and complexity when compared to running your own stack of Chrome instances. You can also send custom JavaScript snippets to evaluate on the page too, giving you that extra flexibility and functionality. There's a large proxy pool that will all auto-rotate for you and are geolocated, which gives a very quick and efficient data extraction and web scraping experience for you and your development team. There's a Python package too on pip to make your life even easier if you're a python developer like me so if this sounds like a solution that could help you out then i highly recommend you check out scraping b at the link in the description box below so let's go ahead and check out the basics of some async requests so i have async io and httpx imported at the top of my code now it's important and i say this that i always recommend that people use httpx rather than requests on the basics it's exactly the same it does everything but you have that option you have that async client available to you so you can do stuff like this so the first thing that we have up here is our first function which is basically going to get the data so in here we're going to be giving it the client which is going to be the async client and the url we then use that keyword await to actually make the request and store it in the response and then we're just spitting out the response of the json the json of the response with the key of name i'm just grabbing some data from an api here now it's important to note a couple of different things and the first one is that to actually make use of async requests we need to have a list of urls beforehand so you need to either know them with know the urls where you want to go or you want to uh, actually construct them by pulling them all off of a page or something like that that's why async is so good for broad crawls because you can easily just get all the links and start to feel out and follow them like that so that's that the second function i have here is the main the async main function which is where we create the client i'm going to be using this keyword with which is our context manager which means all of the connections are going to be managed and closed for us then i have this uh, empty list tasks which is where we're going to store what we want the async code and the client to do and here I'm just basically creating a list of URLs in here now I generally tend to do this outside of my async function and pass them in because this information is probably going to come from somewhere else anyway so I have the task.append and get data which was our initial function so we're basically saying these are all the things that we want to do we want to use this client with our get data function on this URL and I'm just using a range to put in a new character number uh, character ID to this API call each time so we have our set of tasks then we use async io to gather all of those tasks together and then we run it at the bottom giving it this main function and here I'm just printing out the data that comes back you can absolutely return the information from this uh, function and do something else with it as you need to so I'm going to save and we will run this and for that that was 2.8 seconds and that was for the uh, 150 a uh, 150 re uh, request calls there so if you imagine if it, we had to do that synchronously that's going to take probably a lot longer so 2.8 seconds not so bad and you can see that's just the information i'm getting back so what we want to do is we want to transpose this into our original code so we can make this a little bit quicker so what i'm going to say is that this code goes through each page gets all of the links for each product visits that link and pulls out the product information so what we're going to do is we're going to async the 
product detail page part, which is gonna be pretty easy for us to put in and get us some time back, some gains that way. So the first thing that I wanna do is actually wanna change this links funk this uh, links here because what I had to do was construct the URL with the base and using this check URL text uh, function here, which you can see basically just text to see if the catalog word was in that URL and adds it in if it wasn't. I had some problems where some of the URLs didn't have this, so I needed to add that in. So what we're going to do is we're going to construct uh, this here. So I'm just going to create a new uh, links and we're going to use um, list comprehension. And this is just going to be base URL plus check URL text with the link for link in detail links like so. so this is basically just going to get us ahead and give us this clean set of actual links full links that we need to use so i'm going to go ahead and we'll just copy uh, we'll just comment this out and then we can start to work now we're going to create two new functions just like i showed you in the other code so we need to start with async which is our keyword and this one i'm just going to call uh, async get data and then we're going to be giving it the client and the URL information just like the other code from here we can say our response is equal to await we need that await keyword async and await and we want to do our client dot get on the URL like this now what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to put in passing some of the information into this function technically passing you don't do asynchronously because it's a cpu task not a network io task but i found that putting it in here doesn't seem to hinder the performance too much and it actually works out pretty well so i'm going to say my html is going to be equal to the html parser and i'm just going to do response.text like so from here all i'm going to do is i'm actually just going to print the information out like we had it before so i'll just do a print and it was get, uh, I think the function is called detail page new. That's not the greatest name. We'll double check that. If we go here and we go uh, spacebar GD, jump to definition, detail page new, returns that information. Okay, that's fine. We can absolutely work with that. You could also, of course, return this information out, store it, and then do something with it. Afterwards, I'm just going to print it for the sake of this demonstration. So now we need our next function, our async function that's going to run everything. So I'm going to call this one uh, def uh, with async, and we're going to give it the list of links that we constructed down at the bottom there with our list comprehension. This is where we're going to use our async client. So async with https dot async client as client then we want to have in our tasks is equal to and we want to now loop through each of the links and create that task with our async get data function so we'll say for link in links which is our completed urls our absolute urls we're going to do tasks dot tasks dot append on our async get data function giving it the client that we've got that we've just created with our async client and the individual link like so from here i'm going to return out our uh, await because we need we've got our async keyword so we need our await keyword async io async io dot gather all of these tasks tasks like so tasks like this okay so i just need to import in async io at the top we'll do that import async io great so these are the two functions that we're going to need to actually async that specific part of our of our code which is going to give us a bit of a performance boost so now here we can just simply call async io dot run on uh, a with async function because this is our like main async function if you like giving it the list of links like this okay so that's essentially going to go through page one get the list of the get all the links which is what we're doing here the while true is just my pagination and how i'm dealing with it there again if you want to see this i've done this in a video just recently which i'll link to so you can see how i made all of this code and then you can follow this one as well uh, and add this in if you want to follow along i'll also have the code in my github with a link in below this creates the actual partial links this creates the complete links and here we run our async code 
like so. Okay, so we'll go and run and we should see it being slightly different. So it's coming through and you can see the chunks of the data that's coming through much quicker and we can see we're just going through the pages. And that's because each of this time we're grabbing the book information, we're doing 20 or so as in a go asynchronously. So we are not waiting for 20 responses to each, we're not waiting for each response to each individual request. We're essentially creating 20 requests and managing all of the responses that come back. So this is already gonna be much quicker. We're already on page 37. The first one took one minute 43. I think this one's gonna take us, if I remember rightly, about 40 seconds. I think I've talked just about long enough. Perfect timing to show you it takes 42.7 seconds. So we've sped that up quite dramatically by not changing our code very much at all. So I'm sure you're sat there thinking, well, that's all well and good, but why don't you use async for the whole thing? And I did, I'll show you that in just a second. The main reason though that that's a bit more difficult is because we're actually using pagination, we're going through the next page. And if you think that you need to go to the page to get the next page, you can't actually do that asynchronously because we need all of those page links done first. But I do have a solution for that. Uh, so let's open up this, um, which one is it? async rewrite, here we go. The first parts remain basically the same. I did use iter tools chain. I don't think this was a particularly good solution, but I'll show you that there. So the first parts remains the same, which is our data. And I created uh, an integer value because I had some problems with um, the integers and the string coming back anyway. Um, this is all the same. But what I've done here is um, I've actually created a total pages function. Now what this does is it's a synchronous, so it makes one initial request and tells me how many pages the website showed on its main page. So the first page went out, I got it, and it showed me how many pages there were in total. And that's what this does here, pages that I had to check for, it was an integer so I could then compare them, and my uh, LSP doesn't like the fact that I'm returning something or none, it's gonna to have to get over that for the moment. Thank you, dynamically typed languages. So what we're saying is that we're basically calculating the last available page here. This pass links is the same. Get links is now an async function, so we can actually go ahead and run this. So you can see we're creating that here. And this is basically getting all of the links for the pages. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the total pages here. That's the function I just showed you. Then we're creating our tasks for each individual um, pagination page. So one total page of all of the products that goes there. Then the same thing, basically what we just had, getting the details and then down here, I'm basically going through each and every single one. So each page is now async, it returns its data. We then get all of the links from that, which we can then go out and get that way. So this results in uh, much more Start much speedier uh, time async rewrites a much speedier response because we can just do it all and grab it all almost instantly and the time spent here is basically passing the information 7.6 seconds so we have gone from synchronous about 1000 requests for 1 minute and 43 seconds down to Asyncing part of it nice and easy which took about 40 seconds down to rewriting it to a complete async with a few different solutions that we needed to implement to getting it down to 7.6 seconds and this returns exactly the same data still a thousand odd pages much much quicker so if you've enjoyed this video i'd really appreciate it if you like comment and subscribe it really helps me out and also this video right here i think you're going to find interesting as well so click on that one